Welcome to the Abide Project. This is Wednesday evening's report from Synod 2023. I am Reverend Tyler Wagamaker. And I'm the, I'm the Reverend Cedric Parcells. Oh, it is late, Cedric. Sometimes we even can forget ourselves we on, um, on late nights late because tonight. it is. The Synod went late tonight, actually, okay. uh, because it was, a, it was a day that was just full of a lot of conversation, uh, yes. a lot of weighty conversation dealing primarily with the matters of human sexuality and the mm -hmm. implications of it and mm -hmm. uh, the life of the confessions but also pastoral care life and and there was a lot of a lot of weariness you could tell in some of the delegates mm -hmm. as the as the day was going along yes. and the weight really settled in we'll talk about that in just a little bit yes yes so yeah well so we started our day with worship as synod normally does and actually always does yes it does uh, yes. and uh, which was good and then we, or I should say the delegates, sent it, got right into the work of Committee 7, which was all about the human sexuality report and confessional status and how to respond to all the overtures with regard to that. And there was, uh, there were actually uh, three reports. You could say there was the report where all the members of Committee 7 were in agreement. Yes. This is what we yes. should do. Uh, and then they had a majority and minority report having to do with confessional status in yes, particular. Yes. Yeah, but we but we dealt with what they all agreed on first. Yes. Yeah. And of that, there were quite a number of different. I think I, just looking at this, there are um, eight different um, recommendations that they that they made in total as a committee together mm -hmm. for the body. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of conversation. Started out just um, with an overture to not accede to an overture asking us about marriage. Right. Yes. This was uh, Benjamin Petrolji. Petrulius. Petrulius. Yes. Um, yes. Fourteenth Street, CRC Hall in Michigan, and. I was sort of hoping that this would get, it was eventually the, the recommendation of the advisory committee was adopted. So this was not acceded to, this overture was not acceded to. Uh, but I was hoping it would get more uh, traction with members. Why, I mean, why, because I, I, I noticed when we were sitting there listening, you were really, mm -hmm. you're really hoping that there would be a lot more discussion on mm -hmm. that. Yes, because, you know, as for the Christian church and in scripture, it's the definition of marriage that really sets the parameters for what we understand to be chaste and unchaste. And so you really can't know what's chaste and unchaste until you have some definition of what marriage is. And in question and answer 108, as Benji points out, the very phrase, the holy state of marriage is used, which means that those words have to have some meaning. Right? There has to be a definition of marriage implied there or contained there. Uh, so it seems that we do have a doctrine of marriage in our confessions. And I don't think it's it doesn't take too much thought to understand what that doctrine of marriage is. And that has implications, again, to human sexuality. Exactly. Because that de defines what is in and what is out, exactly. primarily. Yeah. And, um, but Synod decided not to go down that path. Yeah. Um, but they did spend, uh, eventually it was on Recommendation 4, is where it was an overture that came from Monroe Community Church. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their classes ended up not adopting it, so they just sent it as an individual church. And that engendered significant amount of of debate and it seemed like that was actually a time for the the kind of all together um, yeah. group which has been advocating for the denomination holding intention both positions mm -hmm. and and saying let's try to live into this together that that proposal from Monroe Community Church at Overture asked for that moratorium for a number of years to mm -hmm. kind of live into that. And there were a lot of different voices that spoke into that really strongly mm -hmm. advocating um, for that. Yes, but it, it seemed it seemed that um, it seemed like better together and uh, other people who, who who were not in favor of confessional status, they yes. really came to this particular recommendation and they put a lot. They put their they put their best arguments out on the they floor. Did. They, they did. They put them out there, and uh, we they were listened to, and people considered them. They did. And uh, at the end of a very long debate, uh, a very long debate, they the Senate decided, no, that's not the direction we want to go. And a lot of times they kept saying, "Give us more time," um, and uh, but some of. Some of the responses were saying, um, in fact, one of the delegates, uh, Christian Sebastia, um, with the Consejo Latino, uh, he said, uh, you know, given more time is not going to change what God's word says. And right. so that was kind of the that was kind of the the, the two kind of going back and forth. Some mm -hmm. saying we need more time to talk about this and another time saying God's word is very clear mm -hmm. about this. And that kind of 
that kind of line just continued on throughout the whole day and throughout much of the conversation about many of the other recommendations. Yes. Um, we heard a lot of the same voices continue to get up on uh, um, the side advocating for us to pull back on, on especially on, on the um, uh, saying that this is confessional. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and they were consistently saying, we need to talk about it. We need time to listen. We mm -hmm. need time to kind of walk through this. That's kind of the reformed way that we've done things. Mm -hmm. And the other side essentially said what? Well, the essential, the other side, you know, I think, I think the other side was represented well by our Korean classes. Yes. Actually. Yes. Um, there was a, there was a profound moment uh, when, a uh, representative from the Korean classes got up and sort of summarized sort of what the Korean delegates were saying uh, or saying to him and thinking about about the issue. And uh, they said they couldn't understand in part why uh, the Anglo community in the Christian mm -hmm. Reformed Church was even arguing about this. It was yeah. you know, a simple matter of this is what God's word teaches. This is what this, this is what the Christian church virtually unanimously uh, has understood God's word to be saying for the last 2,000 years. Yes. Uh, so uh, they, they, I think that that spoke very well for, they, they represented the, the, the other perspective. Yes. This, right. And this, this isn't really something that uh, warrants more debate. And there was also a young adult um, representative too, with a lot of passion. Um, actually, in fact, most of the voices on the young adult side were advocating for the denomination to say, we made a good decision last year. We need to continue to live into that because yes. we, that's how you do pastoral care. That's how it helps us as to be friends with, um, uh, with our, our gay friends, for instance, is to be able to speak truthfully and honestly with them about God's word and hold that forth and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what does that look like as it transforms lives? lives right. um, of really passionate, uh, very insightful speeches. So I was yeah. uh, on, on the Orthodox side of things, the young adults and, uh, and especially the Korean voices came through very, very strongly, very strongly and, yeah. uh, and, and helped to lead the way and in, in much of the, and, Conseil Latino. and the Consejo Latino um, yeah. voices as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you know, of all these votes, uh, we, we don't know the vote tallies of any of no. them. Uh, in fact, they made a very conscious um, determination to say, uh, we're not going to give the vote tallies. It's either pass or fail. Mm -hmm. And every single vote that was taken, even though there was lengthy debate of, about a lot of these recommendations, every single one passed, Cedric, yes. um, uh, of the, of the, from the committee recommending it. Mm -hmm. and, and so even when we moved to the majority minority report and they took equal, equal time to read both of them, mm -hmm. and then they went back to the majority report, took that up, uh, Early on, someone tried to table the majority report to move to the minority report, which yeah. now you might want to say what the difference is between the majority and the minority report. Well, the, the, my, so seven, the committee seven had a, major, had a united report that they offered, uh, and then they had two other reports. One was a majority report and a minority report, and those had to do with confessional status. And essentially, the difference between them was is that the majority report wanted to say, no, Synod 22 got this correct. This is a doctrine that is contained in the confessions. And so it is required of all office bearers to, to affirm this doctrine unreservedly as a condition of serving an office. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, there was the minority report, uh, which wanted to take away that confessional status interpretation and to say that this is simply like any other kind of a synodical decision, it's settled, it's binding, you're supposed to act in accordance with it, but you don't have to affirm it. You don't have to right. believe what Synod says. And after a very long debate, way into the night, uh, the Synod said, no, 22 is was correct. This is a doctrine that is contained in the Heidelberg Catechism, question mm -hmm. answer 108. And so office bearers must affirm this doctrine in order to, as part of God's word, God's teaching to us, uh, in order to serve as office bearers in the Christian Reformed Church. Now, you could, even with the conversation, it, there, was a, there was a lot of weightiness. In fact, the, uh, the reporter for the majority report, uh, Committee 7, 
majority report, he at one point he started to break down yeah. and and in fact had to leave the podium and eventually the chair of committee some majority report took the podium mm -hmm. and shortly thereafter you could tell that he also was under a lot of strain um, and uh, the weight was really feeling the weight of it sure. and um, gave an expression to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, th this was not something that anyone entered into flippantly, no. into lightly. They understood the implications of it. It was it was visibly weighing on many of the yeah. delegates. Yes, um, and and those also in the watching who who were mm -hmm. in the undercroft who were watching it all yes. proceed. Um, so, you know, one of the voices I heard too that as the argument was going forward, saying, "Give us time, give us space. We need." Uh, I need my need to be able to make up my mind individually because I don't know where I stand on this and now the church is forcing me. Mm -hmm. One of the things I was just thinking about that, Cedric, is in the life of the church, um, we just we don't make up our minds on things individually. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when it comes to the Christian faith and the matters of Christian ethics mm -hmm. is is you know kind of a, a hyper individualistic it seems western way that we can easily we all fall into it in so many different ways mm -hmm. um and depending on what area, area is sometimes we like to say i'm going to make up this all by myself mm -hmm. and but the church has a really important role to play in speaking and helping us to make up our mind yes. and then submitting to that especially when the the church consistently gives a really clear message mm -hmm. and this year again this this day the church gave another very consistent clear message to, to help those who don't know or maybe are on the other side and say this is this is where God's word is very clear will help you make up your mind mm -hmm. um, uh, and God works through that mm -hmm. in, in a powerful way yes. and so some of it we have to trust that God is going to work through that mm -hmm. and in our own lives and in the life of the church too yes. as well so but with a strong with a strong line that was drawn again by last year and again by Senate so far this year, mm -hmm. um, they ended the night talking about pastoral care, and that seemed to be just a reminder too that the churches need to need to do a lot more than we have when it comes yes. to pastoral care with the LGBTQ plus community. Right. And there was one delegate who I thought made a very good point that, you know. One of the decisions that was made was to task the office of the general secretary mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to uh, develop resources for use in discipling uh, LGBTQ members of our churches. And one of the one of the delegates got up and said, "Why do we have to wait for the office of the general mm -hmm. secretary yeah. to develop this? Go to your go to the CRC church down the road that." You know, might be no, no, no. be doing this well. Ask them how to do this, or if it's, there's no CRC church, go and ask another denomination that that's doing this well. Yes, yes. Uh, we don't have to wait for the office of the general secretary to, to do that. And I thought that that was absolutely correct. You know, I, I my hope is Tyler. My hope is is that after this synod, my hope is is that we can consider this this point that we've been debating for the last two years on confessional status i think I'm, my hope is is that we can say this is where the christian reformed church is and now let's talk about how we're going to implement this teaching in the terms of pastoral care yes for yes. the members in a gospel centered way yes you know i think that's honestly i think that's where abide really wants to get at the mm. end of the day and i think it, it seemed to me uh, not all the delegates are associated with Bider, you know, would, uh, you know, but uh, you'd think that that's where we want to go. We want to get to the point where we're not fighting about the interpretation or the confessionality, where we want to get to the point where we're being faithful to the faithful to God's word in discipling and providing pastoral care for LGBTQ people. And the, the you know we, we drew a strong line, um, and now we need a strong pastoral care that is strongly focused on the gospel, and right. the confessions are strongly focused on the gospel. Exactly. So it's not right. a coincidence that the right. that the confessions um, lead us in this way on on issue of conforming our lives individually and as a right. church body when it comes to sexual ethics to continue to. 
to live into that and how we minister to others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that is very gospel focused. Mm -hmm. That continues to bring us to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Right. Repent and to say, Lord, cleanse me. Give, give me newness. Give me a new day. The process of sanctification. And, uh, and the freedom to be able to have grace with one another when mm -hmm. we don't always do that well. But right. to say, but there is forgiveness. There is a welcome the, yeah. uh, again at the cross. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and we can never out sin Christ's, um, uh, Christ's grace. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about sin, mm -hmm. but we also talk about the grace in conjunction with that, which right. then makes the grace even more sweet mm -hmm. um, when we consider the, the problem of sin. Right. Well, tomorrow is going to be another full day. It's only, they're supposed to end at 3 o'clock tomorrow. That's a hard stop. But they have another um, uh, one big committee that still has yet to report. Right, and that's going to be discussing the appeal from Neeland Avenue, as well as the Unloco Committee, yes. uh, and their report. <laughs> and in addition to that, uh, they're going to attempt to settle the debate that has been going over the last year on the topic of gravamen. Yes, and, then, yeah. and they're going to fit that all in. Plus, then they have another committee that has another report about delegates. Um, uh, can you... Can you send, do you have to send an elder, deacon, pastor, and uh, an altern, you know, other, oh, yes. or can you have some flexibility in that? Right. And they're going to do that by 3 o'clock. And <laughs> don't forget, Council of Delegate voting, too. Oh, that's right. There's a whole other ballot. So yeah. please pray. They need a lot of prayer. Yes. And so that is a good reminder to us as we finish up here mm -hmm. this evening. And we look forward to going home and going to bed and being back here again tomorrow, and we'll have an update tomorrow as well. Yes.